In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to blend two images together in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to bring you back to the beginning and just walk you through this simple and really, really easy process. OK. So the first thing we want to do is have our second image open in Photoshop and we want to select the Move tool. We want to come to the middle of our picture, click and then drag it up to our other picture. Don't let go of the mouse, bring it back into the middle and then let go and there's your image. So you can then move this around. So what we want to do is we want to scale this. So we press Control Command T to transform the image. And then this is really important. You want to hold the shift key down and then click on the square and drag in. What this will do, this will keep everything in proportion. So we can just position this wherever we want. So that looks okay there. And let's press enter. Now what we want to do is we want to cut out the giraffe. So come up to either the object selection tool or quick selection tool. And then we want to click on select subject. And then Photoshop's AI will just work out everything for us. So it's always worth going in and just having a look because sometimes it may miss bits like here. So because we're on the quick selection tool, we can come in and just tidy this up a little bit. If you want a better result then using the pen tool, that's always going to be the best option for you. But it's worth taking your time just going over the whole of the image and just make sure that you've got everything. So you can see here on the leg, it's actually missed out the leg there. And it's because the color of the leg is, is quite close to the ground. So the, the sand there. So let's just make sure we get all these little bits of detail here. And it really is the preparation work that you do here that's going to give you the best result at the end. So let's have a look. It's missed it on this side as well. And if this happens, so if it jumps over, so it's gone over the, the giraffe's leg there, then just hold the Alt or Option key down and that will bring the minus brush up and then you can just go along the lines that you need to and it will it will pick it up. So let's just select these areas. And again, it's jumped, so let's just use the minus. And then around here as well, so the gap on the back. So now it's kind of known knows that I want to do that. Can you see it just quickly jump back there? So Photoshop's very, very good at working out where these areas are. So even though it won't get it exactly how you want it, it will do quite a good job for you. So just take your time. That's it. OK, so there's a couple of little bits here and here as well. And then we've got this area here in the back of the uh, where the tail is and the leg. So I'm going to hold the Alt Option key down again and just select that area. So we're minusing this area out. We don't want this in our picture because obviously that's the background. So we want to come up to around there. There we go. That's looking good. So let's just add this little bit of tail back in. And also we've got the area behind the tail there as well. Uh, I'm not too worried about that just at the moment because we can sort that out in a minute. So up here, it just needs tidying up. So this is the longest part of the process. It really is. It's it's just getting this bit right. So I think that looks good. That looks OK for this tutorial. I think I'll say OK to that. It's just a little bit of a lip there. It needs a little bit more. There we go. OK, so now what we can do is select and mask. So click on that and that's going to give us our selection there. So we can use the refine edge and we can come to where this tail is and we can click there and you can see that's actually now got rid of that area there. There's a little bit on the back there. Um, there's a little bit here that we can go through and just tidy it up. So I think that looks OK. Um, we could possibly just come over where the fur is here and just go along the edges there just to get a little bit of a better selection. There we go. That looks good. OK, so you can use some of the features on here. So you can click on um, Smart Radius there and you can push it up maybe one pixel. Sometimes that helps because it just gives you a bit more of a defined edge. And uh, yeah, depending on your image, you can you can adjust that. The other one is decontaminating colors. That stops any reflective color on the picture. 
um, that always works that's a really really good selection to have so now we've done that let's say okay now what we want to do is match the color of the background to the giraffe so we come to the layers up here click on our uh, layer here and then come up to image adjustments and then we want to click match color so what we want to do is have our source which is our giraffe but we actually want that to be our background so let's just select our background and then our layer is our background layer which is one up here so that's one way you can do it and then as you increase the fade that will decrease the new color that we've added to it so you can get a really really good um, match here so i think around there is quite good because it is quite dark in these areas so let's just say okay to that so the other way that you can do it is to actually use photoshop's neuro filters so if you come up to filter and select neuro filters and then you can select harmonization so if you click on that and so let's select our background layer and there you go it's matched it and then you can use the strength tool here to adjust so there's two ways of doing it so let's just say okay so now we've done that we've pressed control command d just to deselect everything now if we come back over to our our mask here that we've created and select the brush tool and what we want to do is just sort out these feet so make sure you're on black and let's just bring the flow down a little bit and all i want to do is just paint out the bottom parts of the feet just so it looks like it's actually in the area rather than floating on top so we can just do that just a little bit on the edges there that's it okay right so now we've done that we can do a lot more to the actual giraffe and i'm going to come down to the bottom here and what i'm going to do is select curves and then i'm going to click in the middle and i'm going to push up and then I'm going to press Control Command I to invert that mask. We're still on the brush tool. I'm going to select white brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the highlights because if we look at the actual light here, you can see the, the light is coming from left to right. So we want to mimic that. So now what I'm going to do is just paint around the left hand area of the giraffe. So where that light would come along and hit. And you can kind of see there we're just getting a little bit of a nice highlight just around the edges there we could just do a little bit around there that's good and then what we can do is use the opacity to control that so we can have full control over how much we want that to come through and we can also we can change this as well so let's do the same again so come down to the bottom and select curves and then let's just bring this down so we're now going to darken the areas for our shadows so again press Control command i to invert that mask and keeping on the brush and the white now what we want to do is paint in the, the darker areas so where the light is going to be dark the shadowed areas so quite a lot of it now we're going to have a little bit an area here where we're we're actually going to be giving the giraffe a bit of a suntan um, because it's going to have to be darker because it is in shadow so let's just select the legs there. That's it. And then not forgetting the face. That's it. And if you make a mistake, if you do make a mistake, like up here, I've gone over a little bit, you can select the black and then just paint that in. And I think that was from the previous one. So let's just make sure we get that so it so it looks good. That's it. There we go. So if you make that mistake, you can just use that. That's a really good way of uh, yeah of doing it. So let's come down to the bottom, and then this time let's add a levels adjustment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little box here. This creates a clipping mask, which means it only affects the layer below. So if we look at this, you can see I'm just affecting the shadows now. So I'm just going to bring these midtones down a little bit. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And that just gives us a bit more of a realistic look. You can see there we've just darkened it, just so we're matching up some of the light and the shadow areas that are around here. Okay, so if we come back down to the layer here, there we go. 
I'm going to add a shadow. So what I want to do is come to FX and then just select drop shadow. Now on here, you can do all sorts of things. You can change the distance, you can change the spread, you can change a lot, but I'm just going to leave it as it is and just press OK. Now if we come to effects here and right click, we can then select create layer. So let's say OK to that. Now if I use the move tool, you'll be able to see there's our shadow. So that's our shadow that we've just created there. And it's actually from the shadowed areas of the whole of the giraffe there. So I'm gonna press Control Command T and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select flip vertical. So that's gonna spin it around for me. So if we look, like I said a little while ago, the light's coming from left to right, so we need to mimic that. The shadow wouldn't be directly under, it'd be over here. So if we right click, we wanna select warp, and then we can actually warp out this shadow over this way. The other thing that you can do is if you right click, you can select skew. So skew is gonna give you a harder edge shadow. Can you see what I mean? So that's moving it um, and keeping everything in proportion. So let's just bring this further in. Match it up to the legs, there we go. And I think the angle would be something like that because it's quite, yeah, it's quite severe. So again, if we press Control Command T, select that, right click and then warp. What we can now do is just, yeah, we can warp that even more if we want to. So it just gives us full control. And if we want it to be better in uh, little areas, we just wanna, yeah, just really fine tune them little areas we can. So press enter. So that's given us our shadow and that's, that's good. I'm happy with that. So the next thing we wanna do then is just color grade this so that the image and the background look like that they are they are there together so color grading is a really really good way just to just to bind everything together so come down to the bottom and select solid color and then let's just select something that's quite warm so let's have a look about there that looks pretty good and then let's change our blend mode to color and then come to the opacity and then let's just bring this down and we only need a little bit of a percentage in this so about there that looks pretty good so then to finish it off i always like to add a brightness and contrast adjustment because it just it just binds everything together it just makes everything look a little bit better um, we just want to add more contrast because this is in shadow anyway. So let's just boost that contrast up a little bit to around there. There we go. So if we look at that and press come to history and then just take another snapshot, you can see that that was the before and that's the after there. And that is how you do it. So it's a relatively simple process and you can see there's the steps there in which you can do it. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's helped and give you an idea of how to how to blend images together in Photoshop. So I look forward to seeing your images. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.